Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Warpaint Off-Road. Obviously, I'm not in my garage this time. Let's go find out why. at my dad's place here in Central Texas. The reason I wasn't in the uh, tow pig, it's in the shop for some warranty work. I'm up here because I gotta take some measurements because today's frame day. I'm finally kicking off the frame build for the CJ5. So my thought with this CJ5 is to basically cut directly across the bottom of the door jam, use replacement rocker panels. They're like 30 bucks a side, no big deal to actually follow the contour there of the way that the, the door is kind of shaped so that I can stretch it and have it look appropriate. And then my plan is to basically take some measurements and exactly figure out how long I need that portion of the frame to be. So we're gonna walk over, we're gonna take a quick look at what is actually gonna be involved. Hopefully it's not too windy. We gotta insulate this thing, just haven't done it yet. I think I'm gonna stretch the CJ5 in two places. I think I'm gonna cut the tub right here and stretch it a good, I don't know, four inches or so. Not too big of a deal. I can add that onto the frame uh, when I do that portion later. But I'm gonna start with the portion of the frame that's gonna go under the tub where you sit. Now I'm also gonna stretch this portion of the tub right across the floor. Now the reason I'm gonna do that is because it has no leg room and with that lack of leg room, I wanna move the driver's seat back about four inches. The problem is the seat is gonna be back here, which means it's gonna be real hard to climb over this and drop my hips into that seat. So by stretching this back, I'm gonna keep that traditional CJ5 door frame shape. So it's still gonna look like a CJ5, it's just gonna be way more functional. At this point, we're gonna go take a look at where the front body mount is, determine where the back of it is, and you know, kind of figure it all out. Because, you know, it, would it be easy if you were a math genius? Absolutely, but I'm not a math genius, so I just need to measure things and cut steel and pray that it matches. We'll figure it out. We're back home, we're in the garage, we're here with all the steel, or at least most of the steel, and we have the CJ frame. Now, when I got underneath it and measured, this front body mount was basically far enough back to where this edge of the body mount was in line with the front of the tub. Now, the tub in the section that I'm cutting is 42 inches long, which basically brings it back to about here. Now, I want to extend it, like I said, about four inches. So. I essentially need to make a, a cut from about here all the way up to here, but then I was extending it anyway, because if you guys remember, I had a spot where my exhaust manifold, my header, was actually touching the frame. So I wanna make the frame a little bit wider. I'm gonna have it come all the way out to where this body mount is much shorter, right? We're just gonna kinda have it come all the way out to here, past that part, and then curve in. So basically the distance from here to back here has to be four inches longer. That's what she said, don't you dare. Not that big of a deal. This is the fine detail in this frame just to get the first piece cut to make sure that it's the right length because if it's not the right length from the start, this thing's just gonna start off bad. I got two pieces of steel now cut to the exact same length. Quick thing about this steel, it's two inch by four inch rectangular tube with a 3 16 wall, much thicker than the factory stuff. It's also the stuff that they make all the aftermarket frames out of. I'm just saving about $4,000 by building it myself here in the garage with the tools that I have. It's obviously gonna take me a little bit more time but I also get to build it the way I want rather than just literally getting a factory reproduction frame, make mine a little wider, things like that. 
even the stretch, right? Factory reproduction frame wouldn't give you that. You'll see here, there is a seam on this tube. All tubing is gonna have a seam on it, except for DOM. DOM is drawn over mandrel, or that's why it does not have a seam. In fact, if you ever buy DOM tube, I would encourage you to run your finger around the inside of it to make sure they are in fact selling you DOM tube because that seam on a round tube is often pretty well hidden. But on this, just to make it aesthetically pleasing and to make sure that I know exactly how I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna have this seam face the inside of the frame on both sides. That'll help me determine which side is the left side, which side is the right side before I wind up actually making cross members and welding the two sides together. We're basically gonna mock this up, figure out where we're gonna cut our next piece. And this is where it kind of gets tricky. The entire length of the tub where the passengers sit in a CJ5 was 42 inches long. When we cut the tub and extend it, we don't wanna move the firewall any farther forward because we have an engine sitting in front. We wanna keep that point where it was. So we want all of the stretch to happen toward the rear. Now, with that said, I am gonna be hanging over the front a little bit because again, I did want to extend it and I want to change the shape of this frame in the front. If you look at modern Jeeps like my JKU, you'll notice right from the firewall, the frame actually curves in quite a bit to make room for coil springs and shocks. In the back, again, we want the body mount to just hang off the outside of the frame a touch. We want the same thing to happen up here in the front with the seam facing the inside of the frame rail and the frame basically sitting in the rough position of where I want it to be for future body mounts. Again, we're going to stretch it about three, four inches. So I'm going to move it backwards another three inches beyond this. All right. And that should give us enough room in the back there to actually make it work. That'll make the body section of the Jeep a little bit wider like I was shooting for. It'll help us fit a, you know, a, a transmission, a transfer case, a muffler, all that kind of stuff in there. Make it a little bit easier for us. Also allows me to have the right angle. I mean, you can see how much wider we are making this frame here in the front, which is good for fitting all that stuff in there. I'm gonna check this cross member into my existing frame rail to make sure this is 90 degrees. Then I can eyeball this piece off of our new one and have them aligned so that I can get it as close to 90 as possible for our extension. Just gonna zero out the angle finder here. So we're gonna basically take our angle finder, match it to the cross member on here, get it basically as straight as possible. We'll just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfectly exact. Uh, we're not building a Formula One car here basically at 85 degrees. Because we wanna miter this edge and basically make it come in, we wanna take this 85 degree measurement and we wanna cut it in half. Half of 85 is gonna be 42 and a half. So we're gonna close this to 42 and a half. We're gonna transfer that to our piece of tubing here. We cut our next piece at the same 42 and a half and it'll equal that 85 degree angle should line up perfectly from this point. So from the edge of this outer frame rail here, we're gonna bring it in six inches. Obviously that looks pretty ugly. So time to notch this new piece of tubing. I've already cut two of them. They're both exactly six inches long. That way the other side should match perfectly when we get them all uh, set up and tacked in. So let's go get it done. Anytime you're doing anything with a frame, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your welds are really good and that your penetration is really awesome. As you can see here, I've obviously ground down everything to make sure everything is really nice and clean. It's kind of beveled a little bit in there to make sure that I get enough penetration. I've done that all the way around. Always tack weld everything initially. Then after you've confirmed fitment later on, you can always go back and finish welding. Something that's probably been eating at all of you fab guys. That Harbor Freight table is not a fabrication table. Fairly level, but it's not perfect. I said it earlier in this video, this is not a Formula One car. This is gonna be an off-road rig, really super loose suspension, flexy, nothing too high speed. And if it is higher speed, it's gonna be off-road. The frame doesn't have to be exactly precise to the millimeter. It's gonna be extremely close, extremely close. I know that there's a section of my garage floor that's level. I also know 
that when I'm tacking things like this on a two by four rectangular and I've cut my angles, that everything's gonna fit like a glove and be pretty square. I'm gonna wind up making one side of the frame, making the other side exactly to match it. But right now, we're just starting to fabricate this, so for what we're doing, this is gonna be good enough. We're gonna notch this piece of tubing to basically go straight back, so that's gonna work really nicely. I don't know how it shows on camera, but it's essentially parallel with that. Shadows might be throwing it off and stuff. And look how much wider we are making the frame. We are making it a bunch wider, but if we start to curve it now in, it's gonna give us plenty of room back here for our exhaust, transmission, transfer case on that side. We're doing a driver drop then a muffler over here. I'm just gonna copy the other side. I'll show you when it's done. You've already seen me do one side. So, YouTube magic, here we go. All right guys, now it's time to basically continue with the build and move the frame farther forward toward the engine. We're working with a couple of things here. This is where the angle cuts are gonna start to get a little bit more complex. As the frame moves forward on this vehicle, you'll notice that it comes up and arches forward. And up here, we want it to come in, like I've told you guys earlier, to the width um, between the motor mounts, keeping that what it was factory. But in order to do that, we're gonna start to get into some complex cuts, and I need to make sure the height of the tube as we move forward actually works. I'm gonna use an old trick of the trade that guys, that anybody that's installed a fence or a paver patio knows what I'm talking about, and that is a line level. I used the line level to figure out exactly how far forward I could go before the frame started to curve up. Then I measured the length for the tube, found the angle for my tube, and after cutting it and prepping it, you can see here that my angle matches up, keeps me nice and square, and then the other end basically follows the frame forward. Hey everybody, and we're back for day two of this frame build. Now before I continue with that line level and show you exactly what I mean by that if you're a little bit unsure, I want you to take a quick look at something that's super important and that is to make sure that you guys write down all of your measurements. Here I have both sides of the frame that I'm making. I have every single piece of tube drawn out with all of the measurements as far as corner to corner, ultimately keeping it as square as possible. This is where that frame, as I said a minute ago, is gonna change because not only am I gonna move it forward and maintain that factory width, but I wanna raise the front portion of the frame a little bit because I'm doing a pretty substantial axle stretch and I want as much up travel as possible. I basically marked with uh, some painter's tape to let me know where the original axle was. I wanna move my front axle forward about five inches or so. It's gonna put me up here in this general area. So I need a baseline. Obviously, I need to know how far from these flat areas of the existing frame to let's say here, I need to know how high it rises, how much. Measuring off of your garage floor in your home might give you somewhat of an idea, but it, it, I don't have anything to base it off of, right? I need to base it off of that flat section of the frame. Using a self-tapper with a piece of string tied to it to basically line itself up on the flat portion of the frame here and then continue the string all the way over to this end, right? I just attached it to the handle on a floor jack. But by doing that, it gives me that flat surface as if the frame was completely flat, moving all the way forward. So if I wanna come forward uh, and basically stay consistent with this factory frame until I'm just in front of my motor mount, right? I don't wanna change the height of my motor in relation to the firewall because we have to fit our transmission in the factory transmission tunnel. From this point, how far forward I can go and how high up it has to go in order to match this section. <laughs> Guys, okay. So without a fabrication table, as I said before, I know that I have an area of my garage floor that I said it was level. It's actually not level, but it's flat, okay? It is pitched, um, but it's flat. So that's actually this section of floor that I am parked on top of right now. Um, you can put a like a six foot level across it and it's really perfectly nice and flat all the way across. So without a fabrication table, this is what I'm gonna do. And all you fab guys, feel free to leave your comments and tell me how wrong I am, but I know it works. I'm essentially gonna take the flat piece of frame. I'm gonna lay it on this section of floor. Oh, she's a big girl. I'm gonna take my section, those two pieces I just cut, 
And I'm gonna line it up from this point moving forward. I measured from here and I went 15 and a half inches forward. And I noticed that from the bottom of this frame down to that string line right here, it was four and a half inches. So from this point forward, I need to be four and a half inches higher to copy this. But I wanna be higher than that. So I'm gonna to go to five and a half. I'm gonna give myself an extra inch of frame rise in this section. So what I've done is I went back to my trusty old Harbor Freight floor jack and I jacked it up so that the front of the pad on this floor jack is five and a half inches above the ground. And now we're gonna lay our flat piece of frame on here on the floor, line it up five and a half inches higher, get our angle, cut the angle on that tube, tack it into place, now it'll give me my five and a half inch rise off of a level flat surface. With those two pieces that we just cut a couple minutes ago tacked onto the front, I have the two pieces of frame rail now with the angles on them set up five and a half inches higher than they were originally supposed to be. So what that now is gonna allow me to do is basically set these on the floor kind of like they are now, but use that piece of paper I showed you a couple minutes ago to spread them out evenly, mock them up, and then make sure that these two pieces as they go up is gonna to continue to carry that frame width forward the way I want it to be. You're gonna to have to check out part two to see how I finish this frame moving forward and then the easy stuff out the back. I'll explain cross members in that video and then at that point, it's essentially a frame and ready to go for body mounts and all that other junk. Anyway guys, I hope this video helps you if you ever decide to build your own frame. It's really not that difficult. You can save a ton of cash. And like always, get out there, make sure you build something.